From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Cheryl Huang. And I'm Jackie Dries. Here's today's news. This is one of the most exciting days at Loyola in more than 30 years. The men's basketball team is in Dallas for its first game of the NCAA tournament. The Ramblers are facing the University of Miami for their first March Madness appearance since 1985. Haley Spittler shows us how they got there. Arch Madness is an exciting conference tournament that held even more significance for Loyola this year. Despite winning the regular season title, the Ramblers knew they had to win to guarantee their goal of an NCAA bid. The tournament saw a lot of close competition with every game leading up to the championship being decided by 10 points or less. In the quarterfinals, Loyola took on number 9 seed University of Northern Iowa. The Panthers put up a fight but ultimately lost to the Ramblers 54-50. Loyola competed against Bradley University next in the semifinals. It was Loyola who was victorious with a score of 62-54. The win cemented Loyola's appearance in the championship game for the first time since joining the Valley back in 2013. Despite the championship game being held in Missouri, it was all about Illinois. Loyola faced Illinois State in the winner-takes-all game and quickly gained the lead in the first half. The Ramblers had four consecutive three-point shots to put them ahead of the Redbirds. Loyola won the game 65-49. <laughs> Loyola is now the Arch Madness champions for the first time in school history. The team celebrated accordingly following the win and were awarded their trophy, given watches, and cut down the nets. Dante Ingram, Marcus Towns, and Ben Richardson were also named to the all-tournament team. The win at Arch Madness guaranteed the school a spot in the NCAA tournament, March Madness. However, they had to wait one week to find out who and where they would be playing. On Sunday, Loyola held a viewing party in Gentile Arena. At the event, Loyola, an 11 seed, discovered they'll be playing the University of Miami, a 6 seed in Dallas. <laughs> Head coach Porter Moser said how much the appearance means to his players. They want to play in the big dance. They want to know that your program can get there. Now, you, it's taken a special group to believe that we can get there, the Dante Ingrams and Ben, to knowing that we haven't been there, to say that we could. Throughout the regular season and Arch Madness, Moser kept saying the team has no finish line, and that's not changing. They're looking to keep on dancing for as long as possible. Haley Spittler, Loyola New Chicago. Now we're joined by Haley and Henry at Dallas right now. Uh, hey, Haley and Henry, how's it going? How, what's the atmosphere oh, wow. like ra right now in Dallas? The atmosphere in Dallas right now is super exciting. Uh, right now in the arena, we're seeing Tennessee White State play. Um, Loyal is up next against the University of Miami. Um, Loyal is up next against the University of Miami. But just coming here to the arena, we saw a lot of maroon and gold, a lot of the NBC championship shirts. So Loyal had to show up. Wait, how are the Ramblers doing right now? They're looking really good, and they just came off, off the, obviously, the Arch Madness Championship win, which got them here. Um, they've been a really consistent team the entire season. They were also regular season champs. Uh, they've been in Dallas since Tuesday, practicing both here at the arena and at SMU. And like Porter Moser's been saying, um, he hasn't viewed this as a new season. He views this as the same season, so he wants to keep going for the success they've had. Um, and I think that if Dante Ingram, Marcus Towns, and Ben Richardson play the way they play at Arch Madness, that they're a strong team that can bring a lot of competition. Awesome. Tell us more about the opponents, University of Miami. So Miami, what Loyola is going to have to stop is the height and athleticism of the Miami Hurricanes. They're, they're a high major team. They're just going to be faster. They're going to be taller. They're going to be stronger. So what we're going to have to look out for is Cameron Crutwig down in the post battling against Miami big men. And for Miami, their best player is going to be Lonnie Walker. He's a freshman. He's led that in scoring all year. Something that might give Loyola the edge is that Bruce Brown, Miami's best player, um, is out with a stress, back, stress fracture of his left foot. So that might let Loyola get the edge and get the upset today. All right, thanks, you guys. You guys have a fun day, and we'll see you back in the studio next week. Bye. Bye. Back here in Chicago, Loyola students are coming out to show their support and enthusiasm for today's game. 
After 33 years, the Ramblers have made it to March Madness, and since the start of the season, school spirit has been at an all-time high. Staff and many students are wearing Loyola gear to show their support and excitement for the Ramblers' success. It's awesome. It's like there's all this news coverage on like Chicago Tribune and like the New York Times is like talking about Sister Jean and stuff. It's really cool for Loyola. Yeah, I think it's super exciting. Um, I think it's a really good way to like bolster school spirit and bring together students and faculty and staff and really just like enforce that school camaraderie. We're very excited. So Quinlan has been working really hard with other departments around the university. It's really been a team effort. So we kind of feel like we're uh, helping out the Ramblers with our own teamwork and practice here. Loyola's student body will continue to cheer on the Ramblers as they dance at March Madness. Students are outraged after campus safety allegedly racially profiled and used excessive force against two Loyola students in late February. Yo! Yo! The incident began when the two students interfered with officers who were searching two alleged scalpers outside of the sold-out basketball game. Alan Campbell, a senior, was arrested in Damon after interfering with the search. Campus Safety stated that Campbell had not followed their request to show his student ID or stay away from the investigation. Coloma Fernandez, a senior and a friend of Campbell's, came to his defense during the interaction with campus police. She says that this drew attention to her, which caused an officer to grab her by the collar of her shirt. Many Loyola students were reporting the incident and yelled for the officers to, to let go of the student. Both Hernandez and Campbell were eventually released, as well as the men who were allegedly scalping the tickets. The incident The incident led students to organize on campus by the name of Not My Loyola. They organized a walkout protest and town hall meeting. And now to Israf with more on the story. More than 500 students participated in the walkout and more than 300 attended the town hall meeting. The group also created a petition which received nearly 2,000 signatures. Joanne Rooney, president of Loyola University Chicago, offered to meet with 15 to 20 students to discuss the issue. She also issued a statement that Loyola would implement body cameras for campus safety officers as well as adding an independent task force to review problems like these. Not My Loyola denied the request to meet, stating that the university must meet its demands before they agree to sit down together. Yesterday, the group held another town hall meeting to discuss how they would respond to administration. During the meeting, which consisted of around 70 students, most agreed that the university was not doing enough, and many of them felt that body cameras were not an adequate solution to the problem. As of now, Not My Loyola is still fighting to ensure that the two students involved will not face any repercussions. They also want a public apology and for President Rooney to hold a public meeting open to the entire student body. Thanks, Ezra. Keep us posted on any further updates. After the break, we get a glimpse of one of the coolest spring break trips ever, and we find out what breed is Santos the service dog. Happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. It's been two years since former President Obama lifted the travel ban between Cuba and the United States. Now some Loyola students are traveling to the country for a new type of classroom experience. Allison Klein is here to tell us more about it. Thank you, Jackie. I was among a dozen other students who traveled with Professor Goheen's digital media and storytelling class to Havana during our spring break. The western tip of Cuba is home to hundreds of miles of tobacco farms that have produced the world's most famously known cigars for over 200 years. Tobacco is one of the top exported crops out of Cuba, making farming a valuable source of income. 
the farmer. Puts it on the stick. Maria has worked at this tobacco farm since she was eight years old. She explains that once the tobacco leaves are fully grown, they are picked one by one. And when it's dry. Inside the barn, the tobacco leaves are hung to dry. The leaves are brought together with a needle and thread and placed onto bars. These bars are then slowly moved to the ceiling over a multi-month period. This is the key to their world-known tobacco, time. Time is what allows these farmers to produce the most perfectly rolled cigars. These leaves have been hanging here since February, waiting for the rainy season to make them easier to roll. From Maria's hands to a government-owned store like this one, there are hundreds of different cigars to choose from. Each tobacco brand has to give 90% of their profits to the Cuban government, while the remaining 10 is the income for the farmers and their families. The attraction has also helped Cuba's economy, being a favorite activity by many tourists, including Loyola students. I am only smoking cigar because I'm in Cuba, and I feel like since cigar is very popular here, I should try it, otherwise I was not in Cuba. Cigars are a part of the culture in Cuba. Everywhere in the country you can find people enjoying this Cuban specialty, and the natives enjoy them just as much as the tourists do. Not only can U.S. citizens travel to Cuba, but it is now legal to bring back Cuban cigars, as well as other souvenirs such as Cuba's famous rum. Did you bring back any cigars or rum from your trip? I actually brought back both uh, as gifts for my friends and family. They were really excited about it. That's great. Well, thanks, Allison. What a fascinating trip. The mystery has finally been solved, and we now know the breed of Santos, Loyola's therapy dog. After receiving results from a dog DNA test, Loyola's Wellness Center has announced that Santos is part Border Collie, Australian Cattle Dog, and other mixed breeds. The Wellness Center held a contest in Damon Student Center for students to guess Santos's breed. The three students with the closest guesses won a meaty meet and greet with the therapy dog. Santos's role on campus is to com comfort students who are seeking mental health services to brighten students' days. Students can find Santos at the Wellness Center during his Sit with Santos sessions. Men's basketball wasn't the only team to bring in a big win over spring break. Loyola's improv comedy team, 45 Kings, took home first place in the National College Improv Tournament March 3rd. Hosted right here in the Windy City, 11 teams from universities across the country came to compete, but it was Loyola's 45 Kings that were crowned with the CIT Trophy after showcasing their series of improvised scenes and comedy sketches. The seven-member troupe was founded in 2002 and performed shows in Chicago and around the Midwest, but Loyola students can catch a performance on campus every month for free. That's it for this week's Loyola News Chicago. Thanks for joining us. 